Hi there, it's great to see you and I hope you are well. Welcome to the garden. It's the Garden Railway Build and this is episode three. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at doing some more of the brickwork and included in that is gonna be trying to get some of these bridges in place or at least planning out where they're going to go. Now you might recognize this one as being a relic of well actually two garden railways now. It did the original double oak garden railway and provided some really great running shots. So because of that I wanted to reuse it in the figure of eight O gauge layout that wasn't very successful but it's going to go into this new one and uh, of course it'll just have the single O gauge track across it but as you can see that uh, several years in the garden have not been kind so it is going to go through a little bit of a restoration. I've also been looking about online at some of the bridges that LGB do. Now these are actually aimed at the LGB G scale stuff but that's bigger, slightly bigger than O gauge. So it's perfect for what I need. In fact, I can even have the track on a slight curve across them, which is particularly useful. So I set out to track down one of the smaller of the LGB bridges at 450 millimeters. It's one of the shorter ones in the range and it's also quite affordable. And because of that, it's sold out everywhere. But I did manage to track one down at Gauge Master and uh, they shipped it out pretty quick to me actually and what I discovered is that Gauge Master do free UK postage on any order over £25 so that's quite useful to know and we're going to be uh, doing a bit of a spruce up of that plastic LGB bridge and making it fit for the garden use but I'm talking a lot here and you came to see the garden build so let's get straight on to it and don't forget to like, share, subscribe and you can also head on over to Patreon and help support the channel to keep making these videos. And thank you so much to everybody who does support us over on Patreon and who is also a channel member too. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'm really excited. This garden build is coming along great and I'm hoping that before the weather turns for the worst, we're going to have a working O-gauge garden railway that's actually reliable. And who knows, we might even do some snow ploughing if we get any snow this winter. But that ain't going to happen unless I get on with the build. So if you remember in the last video started work on that brick base and that's come together quite well all the cement and concrete has set and it looks pretty good and that gives us our springing point for the first bridge. I'm going to use the Meccano one here because I've measured the gap and I've already put down the concrete pad for the other end. So what I'm going to do today first up is to do the brick pillar that the end of that's going to rest on but I've also got that other bridge that I bought from the LGB range and that's going to provide a shorter span so I can just build a pillar here that will support the end of both bridges and then we're going to get on with starting to build up the embankment at the other end and really start to bring together the front of this layout. Putting together the brick pillar is actually really easy. It's just four bricks. And one of the things that I do have to do is make sure that the levels align pretty much with the original pillar that we've put in over there. And I simply did with a spirit level, just placing the bridge across and then using a spirit level to make sure that it's roughly level. And it's actually bang on. I think I lucked out there a little bit. 
The brick pillar was the easy bit. I got that done really quite quickly. And what was probably the hardest part of today's build is moving on with the embankment round here. So just started with the bricks again and just again with a piece of wood and a spirit level just making sure that the levels are pretty much at, at the same gradient. The whole purpose of this build is to get away from the gradients that I had on that figure of eight O gauge build which looked great but the trains didn't like it. So if we can get rid of the steep gradients, then we're gonna have hopefully a reliable operating O-gauge layout out here. And that is exactly what I want. Again, we just kept going with the bricks and it's just simply a case of settling down, getting a good mix of the mortar together and just laying the bricks one after the other. It sounds a little bit facetious, but that's exactly what you do. The standard of my brickwork isn't the best, but part of what I want to do with this is to have the foundations of the track eventually over time just blend in with the plants. So there's going to be, for example, I'm going to try and encourage moss to grow on this. I'm going to get some low growing alpine plants and I'm going to build up behind it with some earth. I've already moved some of the rocks that were in the rockery area and it's interesting that over time they've kind of become buried. I think they've sank down and other detritus got buried on top and that actually meant that these huge lumps of rock were barely showing. So I dug them out, filled in the hole and replaced them at a higher level and this is going to keep the rockery feel which I think is important for giving a little bit more of a rugged point of interest for when the trains are going round. This is the LGB bridge and I am going to give it a coat of paint for two reasons. The first one is to just make it look good. I want to pick some colours, pick out some of the woodwork on the decking and the steelwork in a different colour, but also that paint will help protect it from any UV degradation. Now the LGB products are kind of intended to be used in the garden, so I'm hoping that they are made of UV stable plastic, but it can't hurt to give them a little bit of extra protection. So what you can see here is that it spans this second gap really nicely. The original garden railway concrete base is still there underneath and that will hopefully stop it from becoming really overgrown. What I don't want is plants growing up underneath and kind of consuming the bridge. So that's going to help stop that. And once we get the track on and the trains running, it's going to provide a really great photogenic sight as the trains crawl around the front of the layout here and pass across these bridges. So what I'm going to do next is take this bridge away and I'm going to start work on the new paint job and that's really going to bring it to life. And one of the things that it's really hammered home to me is just how tired this old bridge is looking. So might need to do a bit of a clean up and a restoration on this. So you can see the rust is starting to come through. It's led a hard life, but we can still bring this up back to its former glory. I'm going to go away and get that done. Come with me and I'll show you. When it comes to painting, I've picked out a few of the colours from my Humbrol enamels set. And uh, first up is Matte Natural Wood, number 110. And uh, for some reason, I've actually got quite a few tins of this. So um, I'm going to look to finish that one off. I don't think there's much left in there. And then uh, there's at least one of the all new tins. I'll just make sure there's not another one that's already open. So the woodwork, which you'll see here on the deck, uh, will be quite easy to do with those. But when it comes to the steel work, um, I'm kind of wedded to the idea of green matching the other bridge. I've got a choice of number two and number three. Fairly close. Uh, this is more of a Brunswick green. This looks more like a British racing green. Um, but uh, they are gloss, um, although I suspect they will weather down a little bit. So they're definite two firm choices. Matte number 150 is always a great choice. Um, and then I have thought about a slightly lighter colour and I've got matte 31 here. 
but uh, this stuff's like gold dust um, in these older tins before the formula for the Humbrol paints got changed. So this goes on lovely and it does feel like there's less than a third of a tin in there. So I think I'm going to save that for uh, somewhere on Weir Yard perhaps uh, where really it's needed. And I think uh, we're going to whittle away number 150. So our choice is really between these two. So um, I'm going to go with um, gloss number three. Actually no, two, three, two. I'm going to go with number two. I think the lighter green will work quite well outdoors. So there we are, we got there in the end. So let's get on with it. With the painting complete, it really does look quite good. The green's still a little bit tacky, the brown has actually dried really quickly. And one of the things that I've done is I just sloshed the brown on and gave it one coat. And you can see a slight streaking effect, which is exactly what I wanted. And this is the base plastic just showing through a little bit, and this gives a texture to the colour. Now the green, well, we've suffered with that usual humbrol quirk where the colour on the lid doesn't quite match up with the uh, colour that comes out. So you can just see there, uh, emerald green is what's in the tin and it looks more like a British racing green that's uh, on the lid. Uh, and I should have known that because I have had a tin of emerald green when I was a lot, lot younger and I used for painting model kits. So I knew exactly what colour it should have been. Um, but it just goes to show that you can't always trust what's on the, uh, the lid of these. So I'm going to leave this now to dry and uh, then it can be fitted out in the garden. But one last thing I want to show you is uh, I've got a test piece of track up here. It's what I use when I'm running uh, O-gauge items on uh, the rolling road. And uh, I'm just gonna place that down onto the deck and you can see that it does look really, really good. Now the track on the deck itself, um, I'm not gonna bother ballasting it uh, on the bridge. I, I don't think it, it would add anything. So um, I'm going to possibly just um, hot glue gun that down. And I do have a plan for how all of the track is going to uh, come together and be fastened down. But for now, you can see that uh, that really does provide a pretty impressive centerpiece for the garden railway. Well, it's been quite an enjoyable day out here in the sun. And one of the things that I find with the Garden Railway is that there's a lot of different techniques. It's a very practical, hands-on kind of build. You know, we're really building the foundations out of bricks and concrete and cement. And it puts you a little bit more in touch with how the real railway does things as well. We're also using plants and real soil as part of our scenic materials and real hunks of rock. And I like that. It's a very different discipline from what we do up in the loft on Weir Yard. But I hope you've really enjoyed today's progress on rebuilding the O-Gage Garden Railway and seen some of the enjoyment that you can do with bringing things like bridges into the garden to really provide a focal point for that layout build. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section down below. Let me know how your own garden railway build is going. Is it something you're constructing now or something you've got planned for the future? Maybe you're making some notes and making some ideas or are there some tips and uh, hints that you want to perhaps share with me or other people on some of the pitfalls and uh, perhaps some suggestions on other things that I can do out here. I'd love to hear from you and don't forget as well to tickle the like button, share this video and also subscribe to the channel to be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. You can also head on over to Patreon and help support the channel with a number of different tiers of rewards. Or you could become a channel member and all of you guys are absolute legends. Thank you so much for your support. Without you we couldn't keep on doing this. Until next time you guys take great care of yourself. Happy modelling. Bye for now.
Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support is provided by This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, but a special thanks go out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papere, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, Michael Rose, Trains with Nick, and Simon Snow. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.